Welcome back to the Hippo Origami Show. Today we're going to fold the origami moose designed by John Montrol. This model is quite difficult and I'm using line paper to fold it today because line paper is thin and it's durable. To begin, you start off with a square sheet of paper. You fold the main diagonal like this. Open it up, fold, well not really fold the other main diagonal, but try to find, pinch it so that you get a mark for the center of the page. Once you have that mark, take one of the corners and try to make a mark on the one quarter of the page. Continue to do that for one eighth and another for one sixteenth. This is a total of four marks. One in the center, one in the quarter, one in the one eighth position, and one on the one sixteenth. Next, you take this corner, go to the mark on the 1 16th, and try to fold the paper so that you have a diagonal that is across with the modified center. I'm going to move this stuff away to give me a little bit more space. Then, open up again, turn the page over, you're going to fold this edge so that it intersects the, new s the two lines here, and this edge touches the intersect of the mark that you made earlier. Try to make it as precise as possible. As I said, this model is difficult. This diagonal should be aligned with the diagonal in the back. Once it's perfect, commit to the fold by folding along the entire pa page. We're going to do the same thing for the other side. If you're folding this for the first time, I recommend you to use line paper as well. Once you have that fold, you can put your hand here and open it up and squash down the rest of it. It should give you a modified diamond base. That has a little border on the bottom. Flatten out the entire base. Once you have that, we're going to turn it over so the bigger square is in facing upwards. Take this edge, fold it up, so you s divide the square in half, you want it to be precise. Next, we're going to divide this edge in half. If 
you look at the crease, it's only halfway through because we're just using it as a guide. This edge, hold it over so that it stretches, this hole stretches to the center and this corner touches the new guide that we just folded. It's not too visible, but uh, like this. Once you have that, this is just another guide as well. Put your finger on the corner here where this new line intersects this edge. Fold this corner inwards so that this corner touches the horizontal crease. This will help you get a straight line or straight fold vertically. This fold needs to be as straight as possible. Once you have that, fold it like this. And we're gonna unfold this like this. We're gonna keep this folded and move this paper upwards. We're gonna roll it until we touch this corner and you want to fold straight up. So use the center crease as a guide. It will look like this. Unfold this side. Fold this flap over. If you want, you fold this flap over as well. Take this, the first sheet, fold it up. Make sure that it's at the same level as the fold in the back and it's straight up. So he used this crease as a guide. They should fall on top of each other. Once you have that, reverse this fold. At this step, go as slow as you can because it's highly important that you are accurate. Same thing on this side. Reverse hold inwards. Flatten it out. It should look more or less like this. So we're gonna turn this flap over, this one to the other side. Turn it over so that the small square is facing upwards. This flap, we're going to move up and fold it like this. Halfway of the entire square. Once you have that, fold this edge to the center crease. You can use this edge to align to the back to make sure that it's perfectly 45 degrees. Same thing on the other side. We're going to repeat the same step 
on the back. DC flap, or this, these two folds that we just made, we're going to unfold them and turn it over like this, back to where the small square is. We're going to take this new edge that we, new crease that we folded and match it with the center of the base, so the center crease. And we're going to fold it to the side. Same thing on the other side. Fold it to the center. And fold this to the side. Once you have this, we're going to fold this tip backwards. Make sure that it's aligned to the center. This is where we're going to create our sink fold. These two you can unfold. Fold the crease on the other side as well. And now we're going to do a sink fold for this top corner. This sink fold is important too. You want it to be as accurate as possible. Tuck it in. And our sink fold is complete. As to, you have to make sure that everything is properly tight. This flap, we're going to reverse this fold and tuck it inside this pocket here. After all that maneuver, this is what you should have. Which is sort of like a UFO. This is the big square that we had before. This is the small square we had before. Now, with the small square facing upwards, we open this pocket. When we open this pocket, we want to fold it inwards on the folds that we made before. I don't know, you see it? So we have that triangle we had before. Start with one side. When that's done, take this, fold it outwards. Now repeat the same thing on the other side. rotate this fold so that it intersects the center here and the tip here. Or to do that, just open up this fold, put your finger here, pinch it, and fold that crease until you reach the corner here. Extend this fold to the bottom. Then 
temporarily put it into the back by pulling this forward. And we're going to repeat the same thing on this side. So this is before, this is after. Open up. Put your finger here where you want it to pivot. And then roll the paper until it opens to the corner here that you want. Extend the fold to the bottom. Afterwards, unfold it a little bit, just enough to pull this flap outwards. Next, you want to flatten out this section. And at the same time, making sure that this crease remains in the center. So take your time, flatten it out. Once that's done, we're going to fold this flap inwards here on top of the edge of this flap here. You want it to wrap it as tight as possible. Once you reach the center, you want to rotate this paper back out again. There's a slight bump here. Just smooth it out by flattening it. Like that. We can repeat it on this on the right as well. Fold the paper up so it wraps around the edge here. Once you reach the center, push this edge back, and then there's a bump here. Flatten it out by pushing upwards. Next, we're going to fold this edge to the center crease, uh, or center line. Unfold. Now this edge to this crease here. Where those two line intersects, start pushing it up again. There's a bump here again. Just flatten it out by sweeping it upwards. There should be a small crease here now. If you can see, there's a small crease here. We're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So fold this upwards. Fold this edge to that internal edge. Swipe this upwards. I'll keep your finger here. And form that new crease. It should look like this. Once that's done, turn it over. This section is where all the paper for our horns are, or antlers. And this is where we're going to deviate a little bit from the original instructions, just to make sure that everything is balanced. First, open the flaps like this. So, front together, back together. We have a side profile that looks like this. Fold from this corner to this 
quoting her here. You'll notice that it would imply that this edge is aligned with this edge. Once you have that, this edge is going to go over or well, try to fold this corner to the center here. I'll open it up so you can see the decreases. So like this. Once you have that, you want to fold this curve crease to where this edge is. Now, we're going to do a squash fold. Open up this part with the center here creased. these two edges to the center. Pull this out. see that we have a lot of creases here. There's a point to all this. But before we get to that, we're going to repeat the same thing on the back or on the other side. So let's do this. This edge to the top. here this line to these decreases together Open up this, this fold here. Make sure to intersect this corner. And perform a squash fold. to make sure that it's perfectly straight. Fold this to the center. Fold this to the center as well. Fold them together. fold the entire thing. You see that it's the same size angle creases here everywhere all the way across. Now turn the paper upside down or turn them all upside down like this. We're going to look into this section. So what we want is to make a fan-like fold using these creases here 
and once we get to where this flap is, it's going to be one giant fold. So we're going to start by doing this. Take one of the legs and start pushing. Take this crease, push to the, this crease here. This crease, again. I'll let you look at it from the top. Next crease is this one. And then it's this crease here that touches a triangle here. Once you see the triangle, you can stop. If you look from the top, it's going to be one side that has a fan shape and the other is just a simple arc. I don't know if you see this. And with this, do a reverse fold with this line and this line here. You'll end up with a lot of small edges, flaps here, and one giant flap. That's close to the edge here. I'm going to redo it just for teaching purpose. So, with all these folds here, first with this edge, fold it to the side, then this one, and again until you reach a triangular shape here with an extra layer. When you look at it from the top, you see fan, a fan shape on one side and a clear arc with four segments on the other. And then you reverse fold this into the pocket there. and you get this space here. We're going to keep it like this for now and then, then work on the other side. The mirrored version, just the same, same thing. This fold, fold it so that it touches like this. Then it's this one. Then is this one, and when you reach to a flap with a triangle, you stop. When you look from the top, it's one side you have a fan shape, and the other is an arc with four segments. You have that, you do a reverse fold for this arc to push all this material to the other side. The reason why I ask you to fold it with the model folded in half is because it's important that these two big flaps needs to be matching. If it's not matching, Try to fiddle with the paper a bit until it matches. Next, for every single extra flap here, we're going to fold it a little bit. Like this. 
and do a reverse fold inside so that the material is facing this outwards. So let's do that. Open it up. There's around four flaps. This is not including the large one. Before we fold the large one, we're going to rotate it and fold the other side. So turn it over. With these two flaps, as I said before, if they're not matching, try to fiddle around with the folds a bit so that they do match. Right now, we're going to fold it like the others and do a reverse fold so that they are on the other side. After the reverse fold, they have to match as well. If they are not matching, You'll need to fiddle around with the paper bits so that they do. Otherwise, the next step will be really difficult. And like that, they are matching. You open up and you get this base here that looks like this. I searched online. This is where most people fail to get to. So if you were stuck at this point. I hope this tutorial helped you out. Next, we're gonna put our finger here. Oh, by the way, please help me share this with the world by smashing that like button. Thank you very much. Put your in finger here, your thumb, and fold it where these two edges intersect. Open up and squash it down like a bird base. You should have this. And after all that hard work, we're going to unfold it a little bit so that we can take this sheet of paper out. Okay. Unfold. Just a little bit. Enough to take this sheet out. Once you have the sheet out, try to collapse everything back together. It should work. If it doesn't, then try to fold the entire thing up again. Like right now, it doesn't collapse anymore. That's because some of the folds needs to be fixed a bit, like this one here. And then you get this shape. So it's the same as before, but now we have an extra triangle of material here. With this material, fold this edge to the center. Unfold, fold this edge to the center as well.
this is another important step. If you lose an accuracy, then your model is not going to work properly. The intersection of those two lines make a vertical fold so that it folds to the side. Take this corner and fold it downwards so you get a 45 degree fold. Now unfold all this. We're going to turn this into a diamond base by just flipping it over, putting your f index in there, pressing it, and it should snap in. Once you have that, you see this crease that we made before? We're going to open it up there. Try to fix the accuracy of the fold if you find it incorrect. Pull it to the side and you should have a base that looks more or less like this. Fold this edge to the center crease and you'll notice that it should more or less match this line here. If you fold on top of it, fix it again so that it does not. Like If this corner looks like this, that is not good. Fix it so that this fold goes directly from this corner to this corner here. Otherwise, you're going to have a hell of a time doing the next step. Same thing on the other side. With this, fold this edge to the center. Or, no, I forgot. With this, fold this paper out a bit so that you have a vertical line going across like this. Same thing on this side. Move this fold so that you get a vertical line going across. You see this? That is not good. Want to push the fold a little bit. I'm going to make it closer so that you see. This double layer here, not good. I'm going to push the fold upwards so that I don't have it anymore. Sometimes you can't avoid it, but if possible, avoid it. Alright, it looks like this. This corner fold down. The center crease. Same thing on the other side. And then one of the more difficult sections of the origami piece comes right now. We're going to do a sink fold for these two corners. A sink fold on both sides. Alright, let's do that.
I would recommend that you do it one side at a time. Reverse every single fold. And here is just a pocket. If it rips a little bit, that's not good. But you don't want to waste all that effort, right? So just tolerate it. It's really difficult to do. Once you got something more or less that looks like this, I would say just leave it as is because it's not going to get any better. Now the other side. If at this point you're still with me, congrats. I would say at least 80% of you guys are gone by now. Because either you've given up or the tutorial was a little bit too long. Give yourselves a thumb up, thumbs up. Alright. Once you have that, we're going to do a squash fold for this tip so that it flattens out into a square. Move all these layers to the front. These two are going to be our eyes. So, do a squash fold. If you are using two color side paper or two side paper, you would see that when you do the squash fold, the eyes are actually a different color, which is quite interesting. By the way, if you are able, get a really large piece of paper. Because remember, we started off with a letter sized paper. So this model is already half. And when we're done, it's going to be this size. So, really big piece of paper. Okay? Once we've got that, we only do this for the first layer. You open it up and flatten the first layer of the horn, of the antlers. And fold the back. Same thing on the other side, open it up, flatten it down, and back. Next step, these two flaps in the inside of the sink fold, we're going to fold them outwards. 
they are going to be our front legs. We're going to eliminate these two corners by folding the paper a little bit forward. On both sides. We're going to fold across here. Make sure it's centered. Now turn the model over, we're going to fold this forward a little bit to form the hind legs. Once you've got that, we're going to fold the model in half. The horns will naturally get together. We're going to help it out by pushing all this material back and creasing on these two creases here. At this point, this, uh, this fold here should match with this fold the back of the moose. Fold it forward and reverse fold it inwards. Same thing on the other side. Now we need to thin out the legs. We're going to take a look at it from the bottom. Fold this upwards. And where it intersects the body, we're going to just fold it. Try to stretch it as much as possible to get a good profile. Same on the other side. Once you have that, we're going to drag this so that it's perpendicular to the back of the horns. So just push this fold outwards and use your fingers to push the body so it pivots forward. This would separate the front leg so that it would be pointing forward. You want it to be at least 90 degrees or a little bit more. Once that's done, you want to fold this part of the sink fold backwards and the extra material for the forwards so you get much thinner legs. Alright. 
go ahead and pinch this a little bit for the tail before we dive into another difficult section of the moose. The tail looks like this. All I did was just pinch the sides to the middle and then here flattening it out. We're gonna fix the legs later. Alright, now we're gonna move all this material forward and at the same time move the head closer to the horns. squishing everything together and use some force as you can see this is line paper and it's already this thick it's, this is pretty much the thickness of a notebook that's how many pages there is in this whole okay open this up where the corners are and try to flatten it out. For locations where they don't really flat, pinch the horn a bit and fold it down like this. You continue this until you reach all the different horns. you see it so it looks like this kind of funky then you're gonna fold all this material up again Same thing on the other side. To be honest, I wasn't even sure if I were going to make this tutorial because it was so difficult. But it was a request from one of our viewers, so. I do listen, I, and I do try. All right, once that's done, fold it up, words. Looks like a mess, but it's actually quite organized. Now, for the mouth, that really difficult fold, sink fold, this is the reason why. You could do a reverse fold using that tip here, and we would have a mouth. Form the nostrils or dust out by folding forming the square piece on the tip round it out a bit Sorry that it doesn't look that nice. All right, we're gonna form the legs right now. 
the tutorial the instruction simply says form it so that it's slightly pinched together and for the hind legs you pinch it together and fold it to the back and forward again like this however when you search on Google there's an image of a really beautiful completed piece where they're just using the layers here and they went like reverse fold inwards and then outward again like that which looks really nice all you have to do is search origami moose draw and control the first one that shows up it's I think it was purple or something looks really nice too bad I wasn't able to reproduce the results but here is our origami moose by John Montrell. Maybe one day I get a little bit more practice or I get a bigger sheet of paper. I'll try it again. But for now, this will do. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.